Welcome to day 15. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord grant me peace of mind so I may face with tranquility everything that this new day will bring. Help me entrust myself fully to your holy will. In every hour of this day, teach me and support me. Whatever news I may receive today, teach me to accept it with serenity and with firm conviction that everything is according to your holy will. In all my words and actions, guide my thoughts and feelings. In all unexpected events, do not let me forget that everything is sent by you. Teach me to deal sincerely and wisely with every member of my family, bringing confusion or sorrow to none. O Lord, grant me strength to endure the weariness of the coming day and bear my part in all its passing events. Guide my will and teach me to pray, to believe, to hope, to endure, to forgive, and to love. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So our section today, as we continue with Elizabeth Kenori Mora, is quite short. So I'll just get right to it. So it is a note of clarification. In the preface to the original publication of Blesses Elizabeth's Life, the anonymous author wrote, quote, The shelter of the home and the privacy of domestic life frequently conceal the most poignant sorrows. Wives are specially called upon to suffer in secret, end quote. A more modern mind might recoil from such a notion, the secret suffering wife, as sex is poison from another era. To avoid any possible confusion in this case, we must go straight for the jugular. Elizabetha was a victim of spousal abuse on multiple levels, including her husband's flagrant infidelities and his violent threats to her life. In our day, Elizabetha would be advised to seek counseling or a women's shelter where she could find guidance on what steps to take and protection from her abuser. But there were no such interventions in her time, and so it seems God provided a different and more radical kind of shelter. The Lord protected Elizabetha by taking her into a mystical world where his own presence was so overwhelming and healing that it sustained her through the protracted infidelities and abuses of her earthly husband. Because of this, she was able to raise, educate, and care for her daughters, serve the poor and estranged around her, and remain faithful in her love of the Lord. It's reasonable to wonder, when discussing the life of Blessed, uh, Blessed Elizabetha, if the church is somehow advocating that an abused spouse stay put and pray more novenas. We can answer clearly and emphatically, no. The church holds Elizabetha up as an example of heroic patience and charity, especially in regard to her abusive husband, but does not intend to recommend that someone remain in a dangerous, abusive relationship. In short, if you are in danger, tell someone, call the police, flee. If your children are in danger, you have a duty to protect them. Remember Father Wickham's definition, quote, True patience must be closely allied with courage and perseverance, with the determination to take practical steps, to seek assistance whenever it might be found, and even to invent new solutions never attempted before. End quote. In the face of cruelty and injustice, it is necessary to act. However, you can also trust in the powerful intercession of Blessed Elizabetha to help you. There are few more powerful intercessors than those who have walked a similar road ahead of us. It's true that God sustained her partly by means of ecstasies, miracles, and mystical encounters. But he will protect and sustain you too in ways appropriate to your situation, including visceral and practical ways. Don't hesitate to ask for help from heaven and from your local authorities if necessary. And then ends our section for today. So just as a note, Elizabeth, uh, Blessed Elizabeth, lived from 1774 to 1825. So if you're thinking of it in terms of American history, this is right when the American Revolution is going on. This is right at the beginning of our country. And you can just imagine that during this time um, throughout the world, there were many places where you couldn't turn for help, where the only choice that you had was to stay. But as our author Liz tells us, that's not the case today. 
and this is not something that if you are in danger you need to remain in danger so please take her advice if you are in danger tell someone call the police and flee and if your children are in danger in any way you have a duty to protect them now let's focus very briefly upon what true patience is using father wickham's definition true patience is closely allied with courage and perseverance with the determination to take practical steps to seek assistance whenever it might be found and even to invent new solutions never attempted before. Most times people don't associate patience in this way. They associate it with ingenuity, they associate it with perseverance more than they do patience. Patience, <clears throat> perseverance is a subset and a close sister with uh, patience. Um, so it's something for us to, to bear in mind. So. The biggest thing, though, is that um, our author, Liz Kelly, tells us something that is very important, as does Father Wickham's definition. Seek assistance wherever it might be found. And that is what our resolution is for today. To seek assistance wherever it may be found, I'm going to point you specifically in a heavenly direction. Too often we fail to call upon the assistance of, to begin with, our guardian angel, who God has created specifically to assist us and to help us. But also, the, not just the, our guardian angel and the other angels, but also the saints. We have the ability to be able to call upon them to ask for their intercession and for their aid. And that would be my resolution for you. Whatever problem you are facing right now, and I pray that it is not something that is dangerous, but rather is a difficulty, is a challenge, that you ask for the intercession of a particular saint who has a special affinity for that. So in my case right now with my husband's cancer, um, I've already shared at one point about servant of God, uh, Michelle Dupont. And I actually knew Michelle, had, had the blessing to be able to get come to know her, but she herself died of cancer. So it would make sense that she would probably have an affinity for helping others with cancer. So I'm going to be calling upon Michelle to alleviate the pain, the difficulties that my husband is having with his cancer. Um, and that is going to be how I do my resolution this day. In a similar way, if you have someone that's struggling with diabetes, I know that St. Jose Maria Escriva, for example, is the patron of diabetes. It's easy to Google nowadays who the patron saints are of different, uh, of different causes. So I invite you to do that if you don't already know. But your resolution today, call upon the aid of help. And, and call upon the aid of the saints. Seek assistance wherever it might be found. That's your resolution for today. And we'll continue tomorrow talking about patience and blessed Elizabetha. God bless.